Now, we have a really interesting uh, topic I want to kind of spend the rest of our show with you on. And this is the concept of a thrift store. You're opening a thrift store. I want to hear all about it. I also want to start with the, the question, where was this as a part of your master plan and what happened with the pandemic? Is this something that you came up with or during the pandemic? Give us some background on this. Great. Yeah. So this has been probably around three years in the making. So it's not a pandemic decision by any means. No, no. Which, you know, putting it out there, this is quite the undertaking. This should not be a pandemic decision (laughs) type of thing. No. Um, But uh, not like the nonprofit show. (laughs) (laughs) That should be a pandemic decision, which I'm so glad that it is. So our, our thrift store, which is named Sophie's Thrift, which is named after our, our shelter dog who recently passed away from cancer. But um, so we have Sophie's Thrift Store, which benefits the Licking County Humane Society that is opening up here at the end of the summer. But the process has been something else to, to kind of do this. We've sure. been looking really within the last five years or so, we've been looking for additional revenue streams um, because we have been expanding so much and we really do, you know, our tagline is is more than a shelter. We want to be more than a shelter to our community offering spay and neuter, offering wellness clinics, but that costs money. And so we were looking for different revenue streams and we started to work with a consultant that particularly, uh, you know, focuses on thrift stores for nonprofit uh, benefit. Um, And so it has been, you know, about three years working with the consultant to find the perfect space um, and even just to do the research to see whether or not would work here where we are. Feasibility, Um, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Because if if you're, you know, surrounded by a bunch of different thrift stores, it's, it might not be the best, best pick, but it, it all panned out for us. And we are today, we are taking our box truck that we just got and moving our first load of shipments into the thrift store that hopefully will become an additional revenue stream. So we can continue that mission of, of trying to save as many animal lives as possible. Um, and it helps our community, right? And so not only are we helping animals and helping our community's animals in the process, but we're providing another, uh, you know, another space for lower cost clothes, home goods, furniture for our community that, you know, truly desperately needs that additional um, retail space. Uh, and we're doing it through using reusable items. So we're, you know, out, uh, underlining our environmental commitment too. So it was, it, it was kind of a no brainer once we got all that research together and, and figured out that this, this is actually feasible. To, to I love that. the diversion to the landfill initiative as well. I know it's not ever really the number one priority, but that is a secondary benefit that speaks volumes. You know, it's, it's been really nice. Um, I live in a community where there's a couple of streets that if I were to drive down, it's kind of like McDonald's or Starbucks, you go about a mile and there's just thrift stores everywhere. Um, most of them, of course, benefiting, you know, having that social impact back into the organization. I'm curious with this one in particular, is it attached to your uh, location? Is it out in, you know, into another area? And what is kind of the size? And I don't know, like, tell us a little bit about what you're looking to do with it. Yeah, absolutely. So we we looked at a bunch of different options. Do we build a barn and call it Sophie's Thrift, you know, right next <laughs> right, to our shelter? Right. You know, we, we really had this open, uh, open view of what it could possibly be. But yeah. then literally this space kind of dropped in our laps. Um, where it is, it's removed from the shelter, but only about five minutes away. It's part of a, um, it, it's part of a, you know, retail shopping center. Mm-hmm. Um, and actually, it was a, a big lots location that separated wow. out into a couple perfect. of different places. Um, so right, it's perfect for retail. And we have about, I don't know, maybe, you know, 
two thirds of a traditional big lots area. So it's, it's that's large. A big that's big. Thrift store. Yeah. Um, wow. But that's what our community needed. Our, we are so blessed to have you know our, our community to support us that we were able to do this too within our price point because we had to be judicious of of what place we were going the least to be able to actually make this happen and, sure. and truly meet our mission to to raise money for the shelter but that's what it's going to look like so we are opening up a big honkin thrift store uh here at the end of the summer and it's it's been a labor of love, but it's been a labor. It's been a lot. <laughs> it's hard to open up. Know that. Yeah, we, we know that. We know that. So um, I'm, I'm curious, sorry, Julia, is there uh, any programming that will also be done at this thrift store? I'm thinking of another organization that, you know, they do uh, training in their gift shop. It's not they have a charity, but it's not, you know, and I wonder if there will be any programming done in the store. Well, that's a great thing about having your own store is you can do whatever, you know, you, you'd really like in the limits of the shopping centers, you know, um, concerns. But uh, yes, we hope to have adoption events there, you know, every weekend. So that, that would be the, the ideal thing. And particularly, you know, it gives us other space in order to do um to do different partnerships with our community right. too, you know? So perhaps we have a featured item or featured section or uh, something along those lines. We also have one of those really cool, uh, like old school display windows, like you would see back in the day in those big department stores. We have one of those cool display windows. So that gives us limitless, you know, options of even, you know, putting a kitten or two in there for, you know, a couple of hours and, and having folks see those adoptable animals. Uh, that's, that's, that's the first thing that kind of came to mind. But I think there really are so many options that we could, sure. we could use this space for. Now, how are you going to navigate the aspect of uh, volunteers? I mean, there's so much sorting in a retail environment, not only, um, you know, the bringing in items, but merchandising them managing it, dealing with shortage, all of those things. I'm assuming just off the top of my head, it's about a six to 8,000 square foot space. It's pretty large. Yeah. Yeah. And so we're going to need to have need a lot. A lot. Of yes. Yeah. yeah. So how's um, that working for you? The really interesting thing is we, we approach this by reaching out to people, reaching out to our community and even our current volunteers uh, saying, you know, we know that working with animals is very fun, but it can be tough for a lot of people. And it can particularly be tough with, you know, allergies or what have you. Sure. So yeah. this is a great opportunity for those folks who, who love what we're doing for the pets, for our community, but, and want to support us some way they can then volunteer at the thrift store. We also have a number of volunteers that, that are, younger in age that are looking for these kind of, you know, retail business focused experience. experiences. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that's been a neat way. So I think that's been our approach is kind of saying, well, what, what type of folks would want to volunteer at this location that might be a little bit different as the reasons to why they would want to volunteer at the shelter. And we've tried to, to market in that way to those folks in our community. Brilliant. Wow. Oh. Interesting. So how many, uh, what, are, what are the hours? Like how many hours a week are you going to be open? Do you know? We're a retail store. We are, it, it's, which is surprising. Not a lot of, um, you know, humane society or even nonprofit themed right. thrift stores are open yeah. every day. We're going to be right. open every day, Monday through Saturday. It's going to be from 10 to eight, I think it is. Ooh, and then wow. Sunday from noon to six. That is a commitment. <laughs> wow, those are lots of hours. It's yeah. a commitment. But, you know, we have we have such a space. We have such yeah. a large space yeah. and we have received so much feedback from our community of folks who Good. want to support us through donations that yeah. if we have the if we have the goods, we're going to stay open so people can can get those at a, an affordable price. So, uh, yeah. we'll cross our fingers, but that's what we're starting off with. We're we're 
jumping in. <laughs> wow, I'm so proud of you. Um, are you thinking that this is going to be um, a, per- a primary source of revenue for you? Or what are you looking at in terms of the percent to total of what you can be, uh, what you're going to be looking at? Because this is not without costs. I mean, 100%, right? Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll likely be able to find here within, I think it's starting year two, we'll be able to start to see some increase in our, you know, shelter revenue, you know, thanks to the thrift store. Um, But in the long run, we're hoping that it will be about half of what we are are bringing in through grants and um, sponsorships and donations now. I mean, that's our, that's our dream. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll see so how that goes. You're but really we're... leaning into this. I mean, you're yeah. really seeing that this is going to be your primary cultivation within your community then. Yeah, because it really does allow us to stay local in that way, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Right. Yeah, yeah. So we're able to, to find additional rev- revenue by also being such an integral part of our community, which, of course, we we love our grantors and we're going to continue yeah. to, to ask for that because we still have that story to tell that we need those certain like medical needs costs and, and so on. But um, this is with such an undertaking and with what a, you know, hopeful like pillar it's, it's really going to be in our community. We want to reap those, reap those benefits as much as we possibly can, because when it all comes back to it, it's, it's Sophie's thrift. It's, you know, our shelter dogs thrift store, um, who we cared for, you know, for her entire time here with all of her medical medical concerns. And we need a thrift store so we can continue to do that for as many animals as possible. For other Sophie's, absolutely. Other Sophie's. And that diversification of revenue is so critical, but also I see it as the diversification of awareness and outreach to the community. Yeah. Over the course of this episode, and I, I have a feeling we went back and watched your other one that's been almost a year ago now, Um, you have really reiterated what the community needs. And so it is so proven in what you're sharing that, you know, this wasn't a pandemic decision. This has been a long haul, a heavy lift, a lot of energy and resources have gone on into the viability of this diverse diverse revenue stream. And uh, I love hearing that. There's so many opportunities I've had the privilege of working with other organizations that have a thrift store or something similar. Mm -hmm. And the opportunities are just unbridled when it looks, you know, when you look at that kind of uh, opportunity, I'm using that word again, but you know, there's, there's ways to share your, your vision and your mission along the walls and then branding and signage on the receipt, your point of sale, Um, hopefully, you know, there's a a roundup opportunity that, you know, if it's whatever it is, you can add the rest to, to round it up to a dollar that will go towards medical expenses. So all of this ties back to, you know, to the organization. And that's what I've been geeking out about, (laughs) you know, as a communication professional, professional, and especially one who, who's very visual. Oh my gosh. I've loved to, I've loved developing the, that, that signage that's going to go around. It will be so clear that the purchases that they're making today are feeding shelter animals. The purchases they're making today are providing shelter for homeless pets in our community. Uh, So that mission will not go unnoticed. (laughs) 